Hey everyone, if you're here for the Lords of the Fallen content, it is finally here. Just wanted to put more time into the game. I think these should help you as you explore through Mornstead. And feel free to share in the comment section other things you've learned that I might have missed and we can all learn from each other. You're never safe in Umbral since enemy will constantly spawn in. A great way to pause the game is to enter in photo mode, which will pause the game for sure until you decide to resume. There are different ways you can check to know when you have enough vigor or as I'm going to call it souls to level up. In the menu at a vestige or up at the top right hand corner of the screen for the purple flame icon. The umbral lamp has many uses. It can be used to siphon souls if it's at a distance that you can't reach or perhaps it may be unsafe to do so. In Axiom, the world of the living, you can walk on the grounds in umbral by using the lamp. This keeps you in the same realm without having to go to umbral, avoiding interruptions from enemies. Exploring umbral with the lantern can lead to hidden secrets and way to traverse Mornstead. Avoid environmental damage from water, fire, or lava when you go into Umbral. Now the Umbral Lamp Soul Flay ability has many uses. There are mimics in this game. If you notice an item that looks like this wispy and not a straight line, which is a regular item, it's a mimic Soul Flay to grab the loot. It can also be used to throw enemies off ledges, or you can use it to rip enemies down from the high ground. During your time in Mornstead, you may notice red lamps on the ground. Soul Flay these will lead to the enemy that killed other lamp bearers. Avenge them for pluck eyeballs that then can be used to purchase other items at the Shrine of the Putrid Mother at the Skyrest Bridge while in Umbral. Once you defeat a boss, be sure to soul flay the memory or fragment in the boss area to obtain the boss soul or remembrance that they call it in this game. Light and heavy attacks are roughly the same speed and similar in damage. However, heavy attacks are viable for staggering and breaking enemy poise, dealing more posture damage and can be charged up for even more damage. There are two different dodges in this game. A single tap will be a side step or back step, which is ideal for evading and then counter attacking. And then if you double tap for a roll to disengage from combat. The game, similar to other Souls games, will have multiplayer on by default. If you want to avoid random invasions, the PVP aspect of this game, turn off multiplayer settings in the menu. You can single or two hand a weapon. Single wielding is great for dealing with groups of enemies due to the wide area of coverage, whereas two handing a weapon is better for dealing heavy damage to a single enemy. Either way, the choice is up to you. Dual wielding in both hands can be useful at building up status effects. Since applying salts to one weapon applies the buff to both, doubling the status buildup. Getting headshot is worth it in this game if you're running with a bow. Arrows deal extra damage for ranged combat. To craft boss weapons and gear, you'll need to get the Bowl of Revelations and bring it to Molhu at the Skyrest Bridge, the hub area for this game. First, begin at the Pilgrim's Perch Bell Room and follow this path seen here, which can be done normally and then switch to the Umbral Realm. At the bottom, quickly soul flay to obtain the item or defeat the enemies first, up to you and then return back to the Sky Rest Bridge. There, talk to Molhu. You can also socket Umbral Eyes into your Lantern Socket for special buffs. If you're co-op with someone, whether helping or as a host, only the host can rest to restore your heals, as well as interacting with certain things in the world. When fighting a mob of enemies, take out the ranged enemies like the spellcasters and the archer. They can be annoying and pose a serious threat with the pot shots. Use projectiles. A unique feature in Lords of the Fallen is that you have projectiles which use ammunition and stamina. Outside of your usual ranged weapons like the bow and spell casting, the ammunition bar can be found in the top left corner of the screen, right underneath your stamina bar unless you are a spell caster. These can be quite powerful and finding the right projectile that scales to your build. To increase ammunition, put points into vitality and endurance and for mana, put points to Radiance and Inferno. 
Pairing is in this game, and depending on the weapon you're using can be easier or difficult to master. Pairing and kicking slowly breaks down an enemy's posture for a grievous strike. Similar to a fatal strike if you're coming off from playing Lies of P like myself. You can tell where their posture is at when you target lock onto an enemy. You'll see a full circle that will deplete as you do posture damage. A good early farming spot is at the Pilgrim Perch Vestige area. You can easily bait this enemy off the ledge that nets you about 500 vigor. Just rinse and repeat. While you're playing, you may notice different damage numbers. Gray is underpowered, while white is normal damage, and red means you're dealing more damage. It can mean various factors, including damage type, enemy, vulnerabilities, and level differences. Vestige Seed can only have one active at a time, so if you plant a new one, it will be overwritten, and you can't fast travel to your previous one. Make use of Wither Wards. They're great for when you're in Umbral to minimize the amount of Wither damage you take while there. As you progress further into the game, don't forget to check previous areas that you've been to to access new areas that were once locked away. You can always check your inventories for keys too that you may have picked up. Similar to Elden Ring, you can farm enemy gear you want. Farm them till you get all the drops, as you can see here. Unlock the blacksmith as soon as you can to start upgrading your weapons. In order to do so, you need to free Galinder from her cell in Pilgrim's Perch. You'll reach the Pilgrim's Perch bell room, the vestige of Blind Agatha. Continue along the path and you'll eventually come to a lift that goes back to the vestige. Make your way down the lift and kill the enemies here. The shield knight is the one you want to make sure to kill as he drops the prison cell key. Then head over to the cage and hand her the key. She and Sparky will be back at the Skyrest bridge, the hub area of the game. Talk to her there in order to start upgrading your weapons. Later on, once you find your first rune tablet, you can start slotting in runes for your weapons. This weapon scaling system makes it easier to customize weapons in the game without requiring rare one-time use items for creating your builds. If you made it to the end of this video, I appreciate everyone for subscribing to the channel recently. There will be more videos on Lords of the Fallen to come. And as always, thanks for watching.